Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I love to view the heavenly skies and the planets and the uh, galaxies and the nebulae up in the sky. However, different objects require a different type of telescope. Now for planetary, you want a telescope with long focal lengths and also you would like to use a camera with a small pixel. Those combinations produce a very good uh, imaging train for capturing the planets. But what about those rich nebulae filled up in the sky with colors and, and wider field of view. Well, you need a telescope with a shorter focal length or a, an F ratio of below F7. Uh, for planetary, you want a telescope above F10. Well, listen to this. SV Boney has come out with a new line of Maxitoff Cassiograin telescopes. These are small telescopes that produce a large focal length but also with the reducer that comes with the telescope, it has a shorter focal length. So you get the best of two worlds with one telescope. And this is it right here. This is the SV Boney MK127. Now, this is a wonderful little telescope. Let's look at some of the features uh, with this telescope. And also, coming up in this video, I'm going to show you some of the objects I took uh, with this telescope, the planet Saturn, planet Jupiter, the Ring Nebula, and the uh, Helix Nebula, all taken with this telescope. So let's get on to it and let's take a look at some of the features of this uh, wonderful telescope by S.V. Boney, the MK127. So let's take a look at what the package contains. First of all, obviously it contains the OTA, the optical tube assembly, and the dust cap that covers the uh, lens, and it's a metal dust cap on top of that. It also includes the uh, 0.065x focal reducer and it also comes with a two inch mount adapter uh, and also comes uh, equipped with a one and a quarter inch adapter for eyepieces and shorter smaller cameras and a little dust plug to go in there. Now the uh, telescope also comes with two versatile dove plate mounting bases so you can attach a um, for example, a, uh, a guide scope or a, uh, a spotter scope. Also, you can attach uh, a, a power box. For example, the uh, the SV Boney power box and hub, uh, USB hub, comes equipped with the uh, Vixen style dovetail, and it comes with the screws uh, that you can use for additional uh, mounting devices. So that's that's good right there. Uh, looking at the scope itself. Uh, it comes with the uh, focal ratio of 11.8. That's really nice uh, for planetary observation. Anything beyond F10 is actually for, for planetary, you want anything beyond F8. Uh, this is F11.8, and uh, it's a 127 millimeter full aperture effective diameter telescope, and uh, it does the job. Okay. Another feature of this telescope is the dual speed focusing. It has high precision adjustment, enhanced observational efficiency, quick adaptation to different fields of view, and improved image quality. And with the uh, a uh, coarse focus knob, you can zoom to uh, find your object, and then you can fine tune it with the fine focusing knob. One of the fine features of this package includes the 0.65 reducer, and that takes the, uh, the F ratio from 11.8 to F7.68. In other words, taking the long focal length of 1500 millimeters and takes it down to 975, which gives you a wider field of view. So let's go outside and take a look at the, uh, the, the telescope set up on my AM3 mount uh, up on my balcony and I was shooting the sky, taking several images and test images with this telescope. So let's take a look. All right, this is the setup I have out here on my balcony with the MK127 set in the planetary mode. In other words, in its uh, native mode. And I have a planetary camera attached to the um, system right now. This little camera here has a pixel size of only 2.9 microns, so it makes it excellent for planetary, uh, but it gives you a very tight field of view. Uh, you can also use it for uh, far distant objects that are small and you want them to appear a little bit larger. A camera like this will do just very, very well. So anyway, that's the uh, camera. And it has a, a, a shoe uh, setting, setting for a guide camera, which I have right here. And I have my 
SV Boney dew straps attached to the uh, system uh, here in the front and also along the uh, guide scope. Also, I have the SV Boney a power hub and USB hub attached to the system and everything's plugged into that. Uh, it sits on my AM3 mount, which with the weight of this small telescope uh, is, is no problem whatsoever with this mount right here. The system also has a uh, device where you can collimate the uh, scope if, it's get, if it falls out of collimation. You just unscrew this little device right here, a little cap carefully that you don't touch the lens and it's in there pretty well. It takes several turns to get it out. I gotta be careful I don't drop it because that'll fall down into the garden below. There it is. And there you have the, uh, the set screws uh, for pushing in and for pulling out to change the, the, the position of the secondary mirror to the primary mirror uh, to align your collimation if it falls out of collimation. Th this system was in pretty close collimation when I received it and I just left it alone at that. If focusing uh, on the back of the scope, it has a two position focuser, a standard focuser, then a 10 to one focuser, which gives you a really fine focus tuning availab availability with this scope. However, when it's in planetary mode, it's on a very tight uh, uh, field of view and just touching even just the wire here to the uh, USB port causes the image to jiggle uh, quite a bit. So it, it's, 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 a, it's a patient type trying to focus. You can find focus, but it takes a little patience to do it. It'd be nice to have an automatic focuser built into on this uh, or, or available to put on this. Uh, that would really help things out a lot, particularly with planetary uh, focusing. Uh, just a little bit of motion causes a large a motion in the in the image itself makes it rather difficult to focus, but you can. If you don't want to use it for planetary, it comes with that attachment where you could uh, take uh, the uh, uh, the camera off first of all, and then swap in the the reducer. So you're going from f 11.8 down to uh, f 7.68. So that gives you a major decrease in focal length, which gives you a much wider field of view. So let's take a look at some of those images uh, from the different settings, from the planetary settings and also from the, the uh, reducer setting with that wide, wider field of view. Let's go inside. All right, let's put the telescope to the test. Here are some of the images I took. This is with the uh, scope in its native stage and at the long focal length of 1500 millimeters. And obviously the first thing we always like to look at is the moon. And look at the sharpness and the clarity of this view of the moon itself uh, with that uh, long focal, uh, uh, focal length of uh, 1500 millimeters. And uh, looking at uh, some other pictures, view of the moon on the same uh, time, just moving on over, you can see the clarity, uh, very clean images of the moon itself. And there are uh, different craters itself. and uh, the, the different uh, views I shot of the moon. Now, looking at the um, image of the planet Jupiter, this was Jupiter uh, early in the morning. I got up early in the morning and uh, got this view of Jupiter. Jupiter is still very low in the sky, so still not able to get a good shot of Jupiter. And here's the uh, view of Saturn uh, that I took uh, about a week and a half before opposition. Let's take a look at the live view of Saturn. There's the live view of Saturn as seen through uh, this scope. And uh, uh, it's pretty clean right there in itself. And uh, this is what it looks like after being stacked, as I look at it there, and uh, going through a process called live stacking in SharpCap Pro. Uh, so that's, that's Saturn. What about, um, let's take a look at uh, Jupiter. There's a live view of Jupiter. Uh, again, it's a very small uh, view. Any telescope, <laughs> uh, even my large Celestron 11 inch telescope shows Jupiter about the same way, all planets. They're rel relatively small. That's why you need that long focal length to help zoom in on, on these uh, uh, on objects, the, the planets themselves. All right, let's take a, a, another view of the planet. And bringing up the gain, you can pick out the Galilean moons of Saturn, or, or excuse me, of Jupiter. There are the uh, four of the moons of Jupiter. This is a live view that I took the other night. And uh, there you can see 
um, if you want to watch the moons of Jupiter uh, and, and the planet itself. All right, there's Jupiter in the uh, live stacking view, and I'm going to go and uh, change the, um, the view here to the standard view right there. And uh, let's show the processed image right now. There's the processed image I've been taking of live stacking of the planet Jupiter with the uh, SV Boney MK127 telescope. All right, zooming in a little bit there. You see, there's the live view. And uh, let's just put it in the center here. And uh, let's take a look at the stacked view. Okay, right there. Isn't that nice? That's coming from the MK127 telescope at f11. Point, was it eight? Yeah, almost f12. So yeah, that, that, it's it's doing its job on Jupiter, and uh, did the job on Saturn. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Now this is a a, a live view once again uh, using another planetary camera that I had uh, and, and used uh, that night, and uh, it also was a camera um, one or a 2.9 micron uh, chip size. So there it is. That's the uh, Player One camera. But uh, I, I would imagine the uh, SV Boney planetary camera would actually do a better job because it has an even smaller pixel, and I might like to get my hands on that one uh, for testing. But anyway, uh, this is from the MK127, the planet Saturn. Uh, it's about, again, about 10 days before opposition. So you can barely see the rings right now because the rings are almost uh, edge on at this time of the orbit of Saturn. Uh, over the next several years, the rings will become more and more face on and give you actually more, more uh, views, a better view of the rings of Saturn. All right. I took one other view of a very distant object with the uh, long focal length uh, using the planetary camera. And this is the Ring Nebula, and the Ring Nebula is very, very tiny up in the field of view. You can barely see it with a short focal length of a telescope, or yeah, yeah, short focal length telescope like F7 or F5. You can barely see it. Even at F10, it's quite small. This is at almost F12, and it came out pretty well, as you can see, the Ring Nebula. And you know, even looking at the uh, the, the stars, when you have these long focal length telescopes, the stars have a tendency to get bloated because you're zoomed in on it, but uh, they came out pretty well. So I'm very impressed. Let's zoom in, zoom in just a little bit here. And uh, it, it came out pretty good. I mean, this is not bad. Um, this is a, a, about a 10 minute video, a, a 10 minute uh, image right here. Uh, expo actually it's 14 minutes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. There, there, there you can see the, the ring nebula, even on the edge here, look how clean that stars. Now, you know, this is not with the reducer. This is the native focal length of the camera and all the way out to the edges. It's clean. Look at that. Very clean. Let's take a look at the other edge. And um, it, it's a little bit off, but uh, that might have been due to my tracking and focal uh, focusing issues and so forth. All right. Let's go and put the reducer on and see what happens there. All right, here's a view of the moon with the reducer on. You know, with that, without that reducer, the, the moon feels more than the image, so uh, you need to reduce it down. And with the reducer on, you can get a full view of the moon and a little left over on the side. All right, let's take a look at the, a, a live view of the moon itself right there. I had some thin clouds passing over at the time of this uh, video uh, took of the moon it's, um, that night. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it, it does show the, the, the moon. This is with the 0 0.65 reducer uh, on the scope. So you get a full view of the, of the, uh, the moon with this reducer. And there you can see, as again, the clouds passing on through. But, you know, a lot of times with reducers, though, you have a uh, problem with uh, uh, big netting at the edges of the uh, field of view and the stars become a little bit uh, oblong shaped or, or out of shape. So let's take a look at a couple test objects on that. And uh, one of them was the um, Helix Nebula that I took. And let's take a look at the raw picture of the Helix Nebula. So looking at a raw image, this is the Ring Nebula, just one image and unprocessed. I wanted to see what a raw image looked like 
uh, from the center and then on the edges. Because uh, a lot of times with these reducers, you do get the uh, stars becoming more oblong uh, on the edges and so forth. And uh, disregard that donut there, that dust donut. This is, again, an unprocessed uh, image here of the uh, Helix Nebula. But if you zoom in on the middle, there you go. See, nice, clean stars in the middle here. And again, it's, it's on process, so that's why you have the graininess and so forth. Uh, this is a fit image. But there you can see on the edges, it, it is beginning to get a little distorted there. Then in the lower right edge, we have the same thing uh, going on over here. Let's uh, bring it in. But as you go back to the center, it clears off nice and round stars. Going on to the other side, again, on the edge, not so bad. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a little rough on the edge on the uh, lower left. And on the upper left, uh, you, you have some issues there too. But again, not that bad. And, and you know, with the, the processes and picks in sight that I have, I'm going to show you what it does to these stars here. Uh, so keep keep watching. All right, let's take a look at the um, uh, the helix. Now you know stacked but unprocessed. This is the stacked image of about an hour and about two hours worth of imagery uh, of the helix nebula. And again, let's zoom in on this. And there you can see in the center, um, nice round stars there. But now looking at the edge, this is the st after stacking. The stacking kind of like. Uh, normalize these stars and uh, the stars a little bit uh, you know uh, misshaped and so forth but not too bad uh, but then as we go over to the uh, right hand side try that again you can see just a little bit after stacking uh, it, it stacking has a tendency to clear up some of this uh, the issues uh, with the stars and so uh, yeah, it looks in, looking pretty good, but that's on process. All right, let's take a look at the Helix Nebula process right here. This is it processed in PixInsight, and uh, there you can see it over here. And look on the edges now. Look how much cleaner it is after processing and using the uh, blur exterminator I have uh, in uh, PixInsight. So, yeah, it does a pretty good job here. So... Again, I'm very impressed with this. And then let's take one more look. Uh, this is uh, process and then post-processed. Here it is right here. And there is the uh, post-process view of the Helix Nebula taken but with the uh, MK127, the SV Boney 127. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty good image right there. Look at the star over here on the very left-hand side. Uh, you can see a little double star there, yeah. And uh, uh, looking over here to the upper left, pretty clean, pretty clean. You maybe want to crop it just a little bit, but not much. I mean, I'm very, very impressed with this. So yeah, uh, there you have it right there. Okay. Well, there you have it. This new telescope from SV Boney. It is the MK127. It's a Maxitoff Cassiograin telescope, and well worth the value. And uh, well, speaking of the value, I didn't talk about that. Let's look at the price of this telescope because it's unbelievable how low the cost of this scope is. It's less than $500 uh, US dollars. So yeah, I have links below for this telescope and for SV Boney and a lot of their other products that you can get. And a lot of their products that are very good in quality are about half the price or even more than less than half the price uh, of other similar products. So thanks for watching. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders. And with a scope like this, they're all available in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.